Daring Abroad in association with Equity PayPal. Today on the show, we feature Eve Rotich, an equity leadership program beneficiary who left the country in 2008 to study economics and psychology in the US. However, in 2016, she was faced with a life-altering decision which saw her coming back home to be with her family. I visited her at her office in Harlingham, Nairobi County, as she shared her experience. Given chance, I just want to create a more vibrant economic environment. Eve Rotich did not have a typical childhood. She lost her father at the age of six and was raised by a single mother in Eldoret, Wasingishu County. She attended Green Park Primary and later joined Moy Girls Eldoret, although with a lot of financial challenges. Going through high school, I think, was the toughest part because I was old enough to understand shortage, but just young enough to not care, to just want to go, go run, study, get all the books I want. In time, her love for learning and hard work paid off. Having sought for her Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, she emerged the best girl in her district, which saw her join the Equity Leadership Program in 2007. The program not only gave her work experience, but also much needed mentorship. That really kind of refined my decisions um, while I was struggling with these ideas of what do I do? for high school, what do I do after high school, what do I do for my career, what, you know the challenges that come in with, with a young age, eh? given the fact that I had to be super responsible at a young age. Her academic brilliance also attracted the attention of Kenya Scholar Athlete Project, a program that targets a few talented but underprivileged children in Kenya. Run by Ken Manners and Mike Boit, the program offers the children an opportunity to study abroad by catering to all monetary requirements. This was quite timely, since a young Eve had been yearning to go and study abroad. In high school in Kenya, we're told the, the best thing to aim for is just be a doctor or an engineer, or, which is great, yeah? But I, I, for some reason, it never seemed like enough for me. Um, I, I always felt like I wanted to do so much more in this earth, eh? I reach more people, I'd be able to play a a solid role. Actually, that's when the idea to go abroad even was planted in my head. So with the help of Equity Foundation and CANSAP, Eve applied online and got admittance to Middlebury University in Vermont, USA. She left the country in 2008 to study economics and psychology. The idea of doing economics got in my heart and, um, and the idea that there is economic change that needs to be done right here in Kenya and Africa, not just economics in a way that I can run a business, but economics in a way that I can change the way we live. An excited Eve landed in the USA and was welcomed by other CANSAP and equity beneficiaries. This provided an easy transition from life in Kenya to living in an entirely new place. However, the experience was still shocking to her. My initial reaction was, oh my God, it's sunny. <laughs> it's sunny at 10 p.m. <laughs> the color. The, 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 the jumpiness with which people walk around, uh, the life around the streets. I didn't know that I would be able to engage with those people. Um, and, and, and I say those people because, not in a derogatory manner, but because <laughs> I really, that's how I felt at that time. Moreover, learning in Middlebury was also a bit of a challenge. Middlebury is one of the hardest schools to get through in the US, eh? but because it's, it's tough, they push your mind to, the, to its limit. I remember after my first semester, actually in the middle of my first semester, I, I did an economics exam and I scored a 92. And it was a hard exam and I was like, you know what, this is good, this is an A. I was pleased. My professor, the first, the first thing she told me, Rotrich, why did you do so bad in that exam? Do you have problems at home? <laughs> To make matters worse, 
Ivrotich discovered that she had been suffering from a medical condition that was making everyday life much more difficult, a condition that she had been living with since childhood but was never diagnosed. Um, I had some neural problems. Sometimes I can, ex without explanation, just pass out. My neurons, my nerves, eh? my, um, in my head, my neurons are so closely packed together. It's a lot like, it, it behaves like epilepsy sometimes, but the school took care of it. Eve was able to overcome all these challenges and graduated in 2013 and immediately started working as a project manager in Vermont. After working there for a while, she relocated to New York. I didn't have a job, um, no prospects actually. It took me about two weeks to get offers, but I interviewed, I was aggressively interviewing for one position, a transperfect actually, and I didn't get it. I just reached out to the president of the company. I told him, I know you've done the interviews, your team has done the interviews, I know they've They've, they've gone through everything, eh? but they haven't picked me. And I strongly believe you're losing out on talent there. The next week after that, I got a call and I was offered the job. While working in New York, she received a call from her mother who requested that she return home, a decision that she initially found difficult to make. It's nerve-wracking a little bit, yeah? Because it, it was a point where I know, okay, now I need to be home. What am I going to do? Man, I have a job here that's setting me straight. I could see my mom struggling. She needed more support. Um, as a single mother, you can imagine giving everything to all her kids was not something that she could, she was always ready to do, yeah. But I did support from myself. It felt, I, 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 could, I could hear her frustration in her voice. So in 2016, Eve relocated back to Kenya without any idea or plan of what she would be doing upon arrival. All she knew was that her family needed her. We will find out how she was able to transition back into life in Kenya right after our Miles Away segment. On Miles Away, we tour the state of Vermont where Eve Rotich studied. Nicknamed the Green Mountain State, Vermont has a population of over 600,000 people. Its capital city is Montpellier and is the least populous state capital in the entire United States with a population of about 8,000 people. The state is also the leading producer of marble stone in the whole country. Vermont is also a tourist destination. One place that is a must visit is Lake Champlain which lies between Vermont and New York. The lake is a popular place for recreational activities like fishing, swimming, and scuba diving. Another attraction is the Shalban Open Air Museum where you can find historic buildings that reflect the state's rich history. One may also want to visit the town of Stowe in Vermont. Known for its scenic landscape, the town is an ideal place to ski. And just like Kenya, Vermont's main economic activity is agriculture. The major crops grown include apples, sweet corn, oats, and potatoes. And that's miles away. Eve Rotich had just landed in the country. She had made the decision to come back and be close to her family. But after eight years abroad, how was she finding life in Kenya? I faced more culture shocks here than I did when I went to the US. I, um, I don't know so many things I just could not understand. People throwing trash on the road, noises in the cars. And I think slowly, gradually, I believe, um, Nairobi is becoming a home I'm proud of. With regards to her occupation, Eve was able to reach out to James Mwangi, the CEO of Equity Bank, who on learning of her relocation back to the country, did not think twice of assisting her. I met James Mwangi. Uh, he found out that I was looking into transitioning and coming back. He offered me a job as a project manager there at Equity Group. She later on was able to join Kennel Cobill as a marketer. I'm a marketer for Kennel Cobble, for KCAD and KO Wallet. These are fuel management products that we use to 
one, offer discounts, and two, help customers across Kenya to manage their fuel consumption. So how different is it for her working in Kenya as compared to abroad? It's different, yeah. Things move a bit slowly here, I would say, sadly. Um, but what I've learned is to not let it slow me. Because, you know, maybe if, if I feel like things are moving a bit slowly, maybe things should move faster, catch up with me as opposed to the other way around. Eve has been able to use her experience to positively impact her work at Kennel Cobill, a fact that her colleagues as well as superiors have witnessed. What is different about Eve is that um, she's a team player. She's a person who, you know, is persistent in achieving what she wants to achieve. And uh, she always, yeah, always follows uh, through on her, her assignments to, to completion. Because of this, she does not regret daring abroad since she feels it was vital in making her the brilliant person she is today. Keeping an open mind, it's something that never let me down. It's something that I've learned from many people, but that, that is always going to be my biggest lesson from my experience during abroad here. Yeah? Keeping an open mind, getting to understand people, understanding cultures, because the more we understand the people, the better we can serve them. The more we understand the cultures, the freer we live, the happier we are. She moreover hopes that her experience abroad will be able to change how things are done in the country and result in a stronger and more vibrant economy. Given the chance, I just want to create a more vibrant economic environment, yeah? Just get things moving, get people acting, energize the GDP. And this is her advice to anyone wishing to follow in her footsteps in our diaspora bite. Just do it. It's, um, it's an experience worth going after. It's an experience that is rewarding. Eve's story is one of hard work, dedication, and love of family. She is truly an inspiration to everyone who wants to follow in her footsteps. But as she said, she wants to utilize her experience abroad to benefit this country and enrich our economy. Until next week, I'm Michael Zimanji. PayPal is a faster, safer way to make and receive online payments. With the Equity Bank's PayPal withdrawal service, you can access funds received from anywhere around the globe. Even better, you can now withdraw funds from your PayPal account to your Equity Bank account at a reduced rate of as little as 1%. Visit Equity's self-service portal to link your PayPal accounts to your Equity Bank account today.